Hell is a furnace of unquenchable fire, a place of everlasting punishment where its victims are tormented in both their bodies and minds in accordance with their sinful natures, the actual sins committed, and the amount of light that they reject. Hell is a place for which God's wrath is revealed as a terrifying, consuming fire, and men live with unfulfilled lust and desires in torment forever and ever. Perhaps you're sitting there under the gracious influence of God. God is putting conviction in your heart. This is the goodness of God seeking to lead you to repentance. And here is what God says you must do to flee from the wrath to come. Number one, be afraid, first of all, because the wrath of God abides on you. Listen to the text, John 3 and verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath, the word there means the violent passion of God abideth on him. You know, every lost sinner that lives outside of divine protection as only given through Christ today has abiding, resting upon them the wrath of God. But it's only a small part, a small measure, compared to what it's going to culminate in when they stand before God and they are cast into everlasting fire. At this very moment, in this very place, some are on the threshold of eternity. How do you know that, Brother Curran? Because you're looking at what formerly was a Baptist preacher that had no reality in my life. And God had mercy on me to save me. I preached the Bible. I was lost. There was no reality. You try to make things work. You try to have devotions. You try to encounter the presence of the living God. You try to have a sense of God in secret prayer. You just go through those disciplines and yet, there's no reality. And here's probably the greatest evidence that you're outside of Christ and the fact you have no power to overcome sin. Can you overcome sin? Or are you still living in the muck and mire of internet pornography? Secondly, I would encourage you to seek the Lord while He may be found and call upon Him while He is near. Isaiah chapter 55. Listen, friend, that admonition presupposes that there can come a time where you'll seek the Lord, but He will not be found. If God's dealing with you, if there's conviction, if there's brokenness, if there's an understanding of your sin, Fly to Christ. Look to Christ. Eric Alexander said, the real horror of being outside of Christ is that there is no shelter from the wrath of God. No shelter. Thirdly, abandon all hope of saving yourself. Abandon all hope of saving yourself. Attempting to be moral and live up to these standards that you've heard in these days without the power of grace resting in your heart will only aggravate sin and increase your apostasy. The animal rights people were real concerned when so many of our national birds were washing up on the shore of our great lakes in our country, the bald eagle. So they began to close investigate why these birds were, were dying the way they were. See, because of so much environmental pollution, the birds were not able to find sufficient game and 
sustenance to sustain themselves. And so these birds would fly across these lakes. And those monarchs of the sky would have those wings spread out and flying just above the surface of the lake, they could see a pickerel or a pike. And suddenly they would draw those massive wings as they would soar upward. They would draw them to their side and then they would dive toward the water and they would penetrate the surface of the water like a bullet and then they would, they would spread those big talons out and they would grab that large fish and make their way in a struggle to the surface of that water once again and then spread out those wings and take their flight with that fish in their clutches. Only problem was, many times the fish was so large and the eagle was so far from shore that it would not turn loose the fish before the fish drugged that eagle to its death by drowning it. It did not have enough strength to get back to the shore. Friend, that is a picture today of so many people in our churches. They are embracing their own works. Those are idols. And before they'll turn loose those things and abandon all hope of saving themselves, that very idol will drag them to their eternal damnation. Believe on Christ at once. Believe on Christ at once. You say, that's too simple. You want to know why it's so simple? Spurgeon said, the reason God has made it so simple, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All that come unto me, I will let no eyes cast out. Why has God made it so simple to annihilate the pride of man? Because man always wants to take a little credit, a little glory in what he's done. I prayed the prayer. I walked an aisle. I made a decision. No, friend, it's all of grace. It's all of grace. You believe on Christ at once, brethren. Listen to the words of the Scottish minister, Robert Murray McShane. He said, the present is your only time to be saved. There is no believing, nor repenting, nor conversion in the grave. No minister will speak to you there. This is the time of your conversion. So once again, perhaps the words of Leonard Ravenhill are fitting. He said, if they sing, worthy is the Lamb in heaven. In hell they will sing, the harvest is past. The summer is ended. And we are not saved. Isn't it a good thing that God remembers mercy and wrath? Isn't it good news that in spite of all this exposition on wrath and judgment, God remembers mercy? You say, well, I just don't feel it right now. I, I don't feel very contrite and remorseful over my sin. Listen, friend, if God has given you understanding, I want to use a term that Spurgeon coined, duty, faith. You leave whatever is keeping you from Christ and come to Him. And I can assure you, he will show Himself strong on your behalf and save you to the uttermost.